face the final frontier. Good morning, guys, Jurassic Guest here. Today we're going to be learning how to make a stars inside a blender. So we're going to get rid of the default cube and the original light. Head over into the top left corner of the screen underneath the edit area and go to preferences. And we're going to search for Wrangler in the add-on section and make sure you guys have this selected. If you don't, it's going to look like this. Have it checked and you're good to go. Now in today's video, we're actually going to be changing the world background itself and not just adding stuff to it. So you'll notice in the rendered view, we're going to have like this textured triggered look to it, and we want to make sure it's a solid. So deselect transparent in your scene tab, which is going to be right here, and it'll go to a solid area. So at the very top left hand corner of the screen, you'll notice your cursor goes from like an arrow to a crosshair. We're going to click and drag that way it splits the screen in half. That way we have two different places to work with. On the right side, all we have to do is click zero. That way we can see our camera and we're good to go. On the left side, we're going to head over here to the editor type area, which is this checkered circle thing in the top left. Click on it and head over to your shade editor. Now we are going to be working with the world background. So from object, go to world, and you'll notice there's going to be a default world output and background. Now to start off today's video, we want to add in several places worth of room. Do shift A, type in VOR, and you'll see a Veroni texture. Do control T and it's going to automatically add in a mapping and texture coordinate for us, which is what we downloaded that application for a second ago. So we're going to be using two different color ramps in this example. So type in color, and get a regular color ramp. Now we're going to plug the distance into the factor and click on the color ramp, do shift D and we'll just duplicate it over here. Like a so and we're going to plug the color into the color and color into the factor. So we're going to be using two different ways of doing this. So we're going to have the white on the left side for this first color ramp. And the black on the right side. So you can just click and drag over here and you'll notice that the shapes start to look a little bit different. So just sort of play and see where you like it. We're going to keep it underneath the B that way. It looks nice and clean and that'll be good to go. This other one is going to be determining the color. This is our density. Now you can sort of keep it in this F1 Euclidean sort of circle shapes, but I want like a little bit more of a randomized texture to it. So we're going to change from F1 over to an F2 and we're going to add in the Manhattan. You'll notice you'll get a lot less density in this one. So we're going to have to increase our scale by a huge amount. So this first one, we're going to do 300. And you'll notice if you zoom in, it actually starts getting like random shapes and patterns for stars, which looks super cool. All right, so head over to this other color ramp and we're going to click this plus sign here to add in a new divider and click on the plus sign one more time. That way we have several different ones. We'll click on this first one here. Now we want to add in a couple different colors. So this first one, we're going to add in a red. See if you find a color that you like. So to copy it over into the next one, we're going to click on the next tab here where it's white. Click on this little eye drop icon and copy that red. And all we have to do is darken the slider some and move the light over to that side. That way it's nice and easy to find. And now that we have all that set, we're going to do this a couple different times. That way we get several different colors in our star system. We're going to be using reds, blues, and a little bit of yellows to make it look like a realistic field. So to do that, from the mapping node all the way over to the background, we're going to click and drag. That way everything is selected. Do shift and D and it's going to duplicate everything down here like a so. Now you'll notice that we didn't copy the texture coordinate. And that's because we're actually able to plug it in the same. So just do a new line from the generated or to the top vector and you're good to go in that area. But if you notice the world output, we don't have any other places we can do. So we need to do shift A, search for a add shader node, add this in between the two, plug you into there like a so. Now everything's going to be the exact same as before, so it's literally going to be right on top of each other, so you won't notice a difference yet. So we're going to change the scale down to 200. We're going to keep the white and black color ramp the same, so this is going to be the same throughout all of our examples, but we're just going to be changing this node here. So to start off, we're going to be looking for like a darkish blue, whatever color that you guys like the best. And we'll want to select over here in this red, do the eye drop. Like here, like so. And then we just want to increase it some right about there. 
now you guys will notice that we'll start getting our reds and blues and it'll all start getting like a whole bunch of random patterns and if you zoom in you'll notice that there's going to be like the outline of the shapes obviously if we had the circles you would be able to see it a little bit differently but i think these random patterns look the best for stars all right, and so we got all that. So we're going to copy both of these this time since we're going to be adding in several nodes. And you know what? We'll even copy in the add node just to make it easier on ourselves. So we'll click and drag. And we're going to be actually adding in an add node to connect these other guys. So search add, boom, place this in between you, shader into shader. That way everything is connected. We still need to plug in the texture coordinate over here to the very top though. So just click and drag from the generated all the way to the very top node area there. And it should automatically snap in so it's not too hard to line up. So this next scale, we're going to do 600 and we're going to change from a dark red over to like a yellowish color, something like that. Come over here and get the eye drop. A lot of this is going to be repeating the same steps, but that way we can all keep along at the same pace. Now we got the yellow set. Come down over to the next line here. So we're going to do 400 for this one. And last time we had like a dark blue, we're going to go with a light blue, basically like right around the very edge of blue and white. Something sort of like that. You'll notice as you move the slider, it's going to be changing in the background in real time. And we're going to add in one more set. So click and drag down over here. You want to make sure you're at least connected into the main world tier here. So we'll add in an add node. <clears throat> add in an add node. There we go and plug in this one shader down here to the very top all right so we went from blues but now we're going to try to find like a blue that is basically white you don't want it completely white though so something around there looks the best and we'll have this one at 400 scale and the last one we're going to change to 500 and for the darker color here we're going to look for a little bit more blue just a smidge and just get ever so closely to the white so as a recap we have six nodes one two three four five and six everything is all connected we want to make sure that we plug in the generated so we went ahead and added those but we still need to connect it to the main texture corner at the very top here so from the generated just plug into these top vectors here and you'll notice that the changes occur and you'll start to see all of our stars in random different colors and patterns so you'll notice it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the different colors. So underneath the background, we're at the very top node now, you can change your strength from this 1 to a 20. Then head over into your theme tab here. Underneath the EV engine, we are then able to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and you'll start to see like this really cool glow effect. Or you can turn on high quality normals. And the render, I normally crank this up so 256 by 164, and it's just going to give us a lot nicer sample size. And the reds are going to be standing out. So for blue, we're just going to do about half for each of these. So 10, 5, 3, 2, and then 1. Something sort of like that. And then you can actually animate this by right clicking and adding in a keyframe and then you can lower it down. So in the beginning of the video, I had it set for about 20 frames. And you are going to need to add in each one of these keyframes separately. So underneath the top node here, we're going to right click, insert a keyframe and just do the same for all these guys. And you'll notice whenever it changes from like this gray color to the yellow, the keyframe has been inserted. And then if you skip over to 20, you'll notice that all of it is turned to green. So for example, we can change this to 10, 15, 20, 6, and 5. Right click and add in all of our keyframes just like we just did. So now as the frames go by, it's actually going to be changing brightnesses for us and scaling things up and down to sort of give it like that twinkle effect. But to make it look just a little bit better, we are going to be adding in one more add node. So search, add, add the shader and plug it in here like so and do shift A search and we're going to search for a background node. We're actually going to give it like a little bit of an off black color. So you want to sort of click and drag until you get a color that you like. You don't want it completely black then it sort of gets rid of the sheen to it. And that's going to basically be it for stars. Now, if you want to add in like the cool cloud effect, we're going to do that real quick. So 
So at the very bottom here, we're going to do shift A, search, add in a noise texture. So type in noise. It'll be the one at the very top here. We're going to do control T, and this is going to add in a new map and texture coordinate. We don't want to get those mixed up from the ones previously. And just like before, we're going to add in a color ramp, put the factor into the factor, and this color is going to plug into the color ramp all the way at the very top here. So we can add it in between these guys as long as they're just connected. So just type in add, put you in between that. You want to click and drag it all the way up to the very top. Those two will be connected and you'll notice that everything starts to change a little bit. So you want to have black on the right, white on the left, and that's going to determine our cloud shape up to scale to about eight. Have the detail at 16 and you'll notice it will start to dissipate. This is the same method that we used to create the clouds. Now from this black area here, you can add in. Now from the middle here, click the plus sign. So for this guy right here in the middle, if you want to have like red or purple, whatever color suits your needs. And to animate it this way from the zero node, right click, insert a keyframe on the W. And for the 20, just change it very slightly. So to, to move the clouds around just ever so slightly, you want to change the W to about 0.3. That way it just barely moves along the keyframes and generates its own sort of atmosphere. So we did go ahead and change some of the values. So at the very top, we got 300 for the skill, 100, 300, 400, 400, and then 500. Just that way you guys are able to keep up. I wanted to have it a little bit more spaced out. That way we actually had like the, that way we had the black space in between the stars just a little bit more since it was a little bit too bearing. All right, so now that we have all that set, all we have to do is go to the top left corner, click on render and then render image or render animation. And we're 100% set. If this tutorial helped, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.